Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional. We are in the book of Colossians, and we have uh, been talking about the theology of Colossians. Uh, the first two chapters of Colossians are theology, and the last two are, are application. And so we've gone through the theology, and we've been talking about how it applies uh, to our lives. Specifically, how does uh, Jesus uh, dying for our sins and coming into our hearts, um, how does God being reconciled to us through Christ, how does uh, us being uh, death, uh, included in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, how does that affect our day-to-day -day lives? And we looked about how it looked, affected us personally. Uh, we looked at how it affected us in church services and things. Uh, this morning I want to talk about how it affects our family lives. Um, what The bottom line is, what does it mean to be a Christian uh, in the family? And so we'll do that, but before we do that, let's uh, bow our heads together. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that your grace is, is sufficient for us. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the, the fact that yesterday's sins are gone and today's hope stands with us. The hope of walking in, with you in a, a fresh relationship. You're not a God that holds grudges. You're not a God who is secretly bitter. Your forgiveness is absolute, and you purify us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we come to you and ask for forgiveness. And so, Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day. Uh, give it to us to use to the benefit of your glory and the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, so we are looking at uh, Colossians. And uh, Colossians, I wanted to read for you the, the passage. Uh, it's, it's a section um, that deals with every aspect of, of family life. Um, it's, it's Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 21. And the Apostle Paul uh, turns from uh, talking about church life, and now he turns to family life. And he says, Wives, submit, to your, submit yourselves to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord, husbands, love your wives, and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents, and everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. And so those, that kind of packages uh, some of the things that, some of the relationships in the household, uh, reflective of Jesus uh, being inside of our hearts. Um, the family is, the family, the household is an interesting place. A lot of people see uh, home life as a chance to get away. It's, it's, it's your hideout. Uh, it's a place where you can truly be yourself. I mean, you can, you can put on a face at church. You can put, a, put on a face at work or at school or in the grocery store. Put on these. But when you're in your house and when you're with your family, um, you're pretty much who you are, uh, as close to that as possible. Now, I realize there are some uh, who are li living deceptive lives and are not really true to their to their relationships in their homes um, but generally speaking that's where we can become ourselves um, and and it's hard for us as we as we do have that attitude to is I'm just going to be myself um, it's hard for us as families to keep each other spiritually accountable um, by that I mean we, we kind of know what we can get away with and um, uh, sometimes I'll do things and my daughter Emma will say dad like that's not really very pastoral of you to do that and it, it checks me um, sometimes I'll say something to check Emma Sherry will check me etc etc um, and so we, we we have these checks and balances at our, our house where we kind of say you know you should especially since I'm a pastor that's kind of that's kind of a harder one for, for most people just Christians a lot of a lot of the tendencies are you know, why are you on my back? Just let me be myself. And so we know when we, one of the aspects is we know what we can get away with, with our partners and with our children. We've done it before and it's no big deal. I'm just going to keep on doing it, being myself. Um, and that, that becomes familiarity in that sense is not a good thing because it, 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 it really kind of takes away the checks and balances and the accountability aspect of, of relationships. Um, the other aspect um, that we know uh, if we know each other too well, not only can we get away with what we want to get away with, we don't let the other person uh, try to improve. That's, a, that's one of the dynamics of a relational dynamics in the family that um, someone, like one of the persons, let's say you got a mom and dad and two children, a son and a daughter. 
and the son comes home, or let's just say the mom comes home after church <clears throat> one night and she just feels spiritually invigorated. Uh, it, uh, something happened in church that just sparked a revival in her heart and she wants to give more and more and more to Jesus. She wants to just give everything to Jesus. And then dad's sitting there. He'd been to the church service, the same church service. The kids were too. They didn't feel the same thing. Um, but she's just all gung-ho about this change thing. And, and they look at her and they say, you know what? Uh, we know who you are. We know what you've been and all this kind of stuff. We know who, what you're like. So don't play this holier-than-thou game with us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so when that happens, it discourages the person who wants to advance in the Lord and, and become um, go deeper in Christ. And that's a, that's a sad thing. So, so there's familiarity in the home life. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's a wonderful thing, but a lot of times it can work against you in, in your spiritual um, growth and, and uh, the way that you grow. Um, Jesus found that uh, he didn't have a lot of you know, respect from his brothers. Uh, he didn't have a lot of respect from the people from his hometown. I wanted to read you a passage of scripture. Um, this is Matthew 13, 54 to 57. Um, Jesus is traveling, he says, coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue. This is in his hometown. This is just picture yourself, an itinerant pastor, you're going all around, and all of a sudden you come to your hometown and you go to the church of that hometown. And so he's preaching in that synagogue. And the people that knew him from childhood up, they were amazed. It says, where did this man get this wisdom and this miraculous powers? These miraculous powers, they asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? And this is where they just kind of reduce Jesus to everything we know that he is into this kind of family person. Okay, uh, They reduce him to, this, to, his, to his family history. Um, say, isn't, this Mar isn't his mother's name Mary? Aren't his brothers, uh, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, aren't all his sisters here with us? Uh, with us? Uh, when, where did this man get all uh, these things? And then they, there's that phrase, I capitalize it, and, this, uh, and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, only in his own hometown, in his own house, is a prophet without honor. And so Jesus is kind of highlighting that dynamic that family life, although it's a great uh, breeding ground for spiritual maturity, it's, a, it's, it's what God designed. The family is what God designed to bring people uh, closer and closer to Him. And it's, and it's based on a, a, on a philosophy of mutual accountability and, and uh, a passionate pursuit of God. And that's what a family should look like. But sometimes when the family is, you know, go, is desirous of going different ways, we use our familiarity with each other against each other. And so that's what Jesus had to face, and, and, and many of us have had to face that from, from the time to time, time. But Paul says that uh, when he talk, we'll go back to Colossians, he talks about the fact that, that something should happen in the household, something should happen in the family that changes everything in our spirituality. And then he gives us some guidelines. I wanted to close this morning. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on these guidelines specifically next time, but I wanted to close... Um, by challenging us to remember that the key, the real key to, to a family advancing spiritually is uh, to, to all the, for the whole family to advance together. That's the key. Uh, because no one's, I mean, if everybody in the family is in agreement, we want to get better, we want to get closer to Jesus, that will help tremendously. Uh, so that you don't have a bunch of individuals getting discouraged and stopping and the other one get in this leapfrogging thing kind of thing where at one point the husband's you know holding the woman back and the woman's then then later on the woman's holding the husband back, all this kind of stuff the key is to get the the family to go together as a unit toward toward God and Joshua back in the Old Testament Joshua kind of felt and understood this when he said this word and I'll close with this he said but as for me and my household we will serve the Lord and that's our hope for all of our households, all of our families, that we will together, that capital W, capital E, we will serve the Lord. Let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the grace given to us. We pray that you would give us uh, help in uh, trying to advance in our relationships uh, with each other as a family and with our relationship with you. May we come together as a group, as a family, into your presence. We, may we do this on a regular basis and grow closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. We will see each other soon. Remember, June 7th, that's the date. God bless.